Good day everyone! On my previous video, I had discussed my workflow when doing astrophotography using a star tracker. From just a single frame, the images came out really great, but now I wanted to try out photo stacking and see whether I can get a much better result. Thankfully, I still have the raw files and had tried processing from this to this. I was really surprised with the rendered image using this photo stacking technique. Colors are nice and a bit more clean. And now I'm going to share what I did to achieve this. We're just going to use two softwares that both came from Adobe. The Adobe Lightroom, then to Photoshop, and then back to Lightroom. As you can see from here, I will try to stack these three photos with identical settings. I really wish I had more, but the rest of my other RAW files are either blurred or had trails on it. I will try to stack with more than 10 to 20 images next time. I'm going to use Lightroom to pre-process these RAW files, and then we'll do the stacking using Photoshop. After selecting all of them, I'm going to click one and hit the develop module. Zooming in to one is to one to check. And as you can see, it really looks flat, but it contains all the data, especially when you shoot an uncompressed RAW file option. We can always try to press auto as a baseline and let Lightroom adjust certain parameters. But for me, I'm going to tweak this manually by adjusting the white balance first. And to do that, I'm going to reset or zero out the sharpening, noise reduction, and color. Follow up by pulling the vibrance and saturation slider all the way up to plus 100. And then I'm going to have a play with the temperature slider until I get a seemingly perfect balance of orange and blue. And of course, my settings may not be your settings, neither yours will be mine. It's fully dependent however on your photos and the gear that you have used. So I think I'm all set with this one. Right then, I'm going to reset the vibrance and saturation by double clicking on them individually. I might probably move it just a little bit. And there you go. Not perfect, but I think it's fine. And here's the before and after. The original photo on the left looks warmer or yellowish, and on the second one, we've got a sense of a dark black skies. From here, we're going to slightly adjust the shadows and highlights, add some contrast and a bit of whites, a little dehaze, and a small fine tuning and saturation. I also have to adjust the tone curve for a little bit, lessening the blacks, and maybe a bit more tuning with the temperature slider. Okay, this one looks fine now. I wouldn't touch any of the color grading here. This is where the split toning adjustment is originally located on the old version of Lightroom. I also wouldn't touch any of the detail tab here, because normally, when you add more sharpening, it will also introduce noise. And lastly, one more thing I need to tweak is to enable lens profile corrections. This will fix any distortion as well as vignetting. Here's the before and here's the after. We're almost ready now to stack them. We just have to select all of them and click the sync button to apply those settings. Make sure that we include the lens profile corrections, double checking the settings, and then hit synchronize. Then we have to go to Photo menu, select Edit In, then choose Merge to Panorama in Photoshop. Although these images are not panoramas, clicking this will open more options in Photoshop. And here it is. Photo Merge has several options here. Make sure that we uncheck this Blend Images Together box, and leave it in Auto to let Photoshop merge it automatically, and then hit OK. Depending on the speed of your computer and the number of images, it may take some time before Photoshop load all of them. And since these images were shot using Star Tracker, we really don't need the addition of any black and flat or biased frames. Ideally, 10 or more images is good, but for the sake of this video, and with the images that I've got, I just stick on using 3 frames. Now I'm going to select all of them, right click, and then select Convert to Smart Object. 
then go to layer menu, smart objects, select stack mode, and then choose median. It will again take some few seconds for Photoshop to process the file. So this is now the stack images. You can clearly see the Catspo nebula here and other visible nebulae like the lagoon and tree feed. One more thing we have to do now is to flatten the image. We have to do it so we can reduce the layers into just one background layer. Layers normally increase the output into a very large file. So flattening the final image will reduce it, making it easier to export. And once we finish everything in Photoshop, we have to save it. It will generate a TIFF file into Lightroom. The TIFF file is a stack image we had done in Photoshop, and now it's up to us to fully adjust and finalize the colors in Lightroom. So if we're going to compare the original RAW file to the stack image, there's obviously a difference regarding noise. And the stack image looks more clean. And just to mention again, the difference might be more pronounced if I stack at least more than 10 images. To recap, I had used Lightroom to pre-process the image, then Photoshop to stack them, and then back to Lightroom for final adjustment. So after tweaking and adjusting the stack image here in Lightroom, here's my final result.